right everyone how are you coming with this lockdown hi little legs your dad Wayne wanted me to tell you that he loved you don't forget if you want a shout out like and subscribe and comment below once there was a very old shoemaker who lived with his wife in a little room above their workshop each day the shoemaker drew different shoe shapes on his leather then he carefully cut out the shapes with a knife and sewed them together with good strong thread. Next, he stretched the shoe shapes over a wooden foot, cut thick soles and made holes with them with a big needle and finally sewed the soles firmly onto the shoes. People loved watching the shoemaker at work. Nobody past his workshop without peeking in. What splendid shoes, they'd say. At the end of the day, there was always a crowd waiting outside the workshop to buy his latest shoes. But as the years passed, the crowd got smaller and smaller. Sometimes there were no customers at all. With very little business, the shoemaker was running out of money. Soon, he could only afford enough leather to make one more pair of shoes. He cut out the shoe shapes and laid, him, laid them on his work table. Then he yawned. Oh, I'm too tired to sew these today, he sighed. Early the next morning, he went downstairs and stopped in amazement. Am I dreaming? he asked himself. There, on his table, stood a perfect pair of shoes. Someone had neatly sewn up the leather. What's more, they had sewn shiny gold buckles on the front. The shoemaker was baffled. He placed the shoes in his window. Before long, a gentleman came in. These shoes are divine, he cried. They sparkle and shine and fit like a glove. And he placed the shoes with a gold coin. Now, the shoemaker could afford to make two pairs of shoes. As he cut them out, he yawned. I'll finish them tomorrow, he thought. By morning, two neat pairs of shoes were waiting for him. Fancy bows and all. That day, the puzzled shoemaker had two more happy customers. Now, he had enough money to buy four pairs of shoes. After cutting the, out the leather, the shoemaker went to bed. The next morning, he couldn't believe his luck. On the table stood four perfect pairs of shoes. It must be magic, he cried. And so it went on. The more leather the shoemaker cut, the more shoes he found in the morning. Within weeks, business was booming. The shoemaker was a happy man. He had lots of money and little to do. But he still didn't know where the shoes were coming from. Who do you think are making our shoes? Whispered the shoemaker. I don't know, said his wife. But let's find out. That night, instead of going to bed, they hid behind some coats hanging in the corner of the workshop. Everything was quiet until midnight when two little girls came rushing in wearing nothing but rags. They sat down at the table and quickly began to sew. They sewed so fast the shoemaker could hardly see their tiny nimble fingers. What fantastic red boots, even if I do say so myself, said one admiring his own handiwork. They're fit for a queen or a very tall elf said the other. Hurry up or we'll be spotted, said the first elf. I'm almost done, the second replied. They polished the boots until they shut and left them on the workshop table. They disappeared through the door and raced up the street. The shoemaker and his wife looked at each other, astonished. I think I'm going crazy, whispered the shoemaker. Were those really elves? His wife nodded. How can we ever repay their kindness? 
she wondered. Perhaps I could give them one of my best cabbage and custard crumbles. Or we can make them some new clothes, said the shoemaker. What a splendid idea, she replied, and they set to work. The shoemaker made two tiny pairs of shoes, and his wife spent all day sewing little suits. That night, instead of leaving the leather on the table, the shoemaker left two piles of clothes, and his, he and his wife hid behind the coats again and waited for the elves. The elves were delighted with their new outfits. They scrambled into them, and they danced and skipped all around the room. I've never worn shoes before. Wow, my very own shirt. How handsome we look, they cried. We're far too grand to work now. Come on, said the first elf. Let's show our friends how fine we look. The elf skipped merrily out of the door. The shoemaker and his wife happily watched them dance up the street. The shoemaker might have lost their, his, his helpers, but now he had plenty of customers and wonderful ideas for shoes. And as for the elves, they never sewed another shoe. We've come to the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed my reading. Did you follow along with me? I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. Have a good day. Bye.